Finally, fellow Kenyans, I will end my brief reflections with Kibaki the visionary. At the age of 29, the Honorable Mwai Kibaki was persuaded by Mzee Jaramogi Oginga Odinga to quit a well-paying job as a lecturer at Makarere University in Uganda and to take up a job that offered nothing but a promise. If his professor at Makerere University was right, Honorable Mwai Kibaki had the hope of becoming the first African president of the World Bank, a much safer and a much more assured path. But he rejected this dream in pursuit of a more challenging vision. He took on the job as the executive officer of Kano, then a little known entity where he would survive on nothing but stipends. For him to make this decision, he must have been pro propelled by a vision that loved country more than self. Although identified by the international media as a world leader, he chose not to take the trodden path. Instead, he opted for the uncharted path of an independent Kenya and leave a trail. And this is what the 29-year-old Kibaki did. But to follow such a hazy path, he must, he must have listened to an inner voice, a voice that led him to what the heart sees, but not what the eye sees. A voice that took him to the path of faith. And because of this walk of faith, the Honorable Mwai Kibaki must go down on record as a guardian visionary of our republic. Armed with faith and vision, the young Kibaki, alongside the likes of TJ Mboya, drafted the founding instruments of our economy. Indeed, sessional paper number 10 of 1965 on African socialism and its application to planning in Kenya, drafted by him and Boya, remains the guiding light of our economic transformation. When he became president in 2002, he went back to this original blueprint and upgraded it to the Vision 2030 that now guides our country forward. And using this document, he encouraged us not to be intimidated by bold projects. And that is why my administration, inspired by this thinking, has accelerated what I call the big push investments, especially in the area of infrastructure. And if President Kibaki authored Vision 2030, the next administration must take us to a bolder plan. They must give us Vision 2063, a blueprint for Kenya at 100 years and beyond. So your excellencies, fellow Kenyans, ladies and gentlemen, the man lying before us today was a gentleman, a measured man, a man of few words, but a man of decisive action. If he was with us here today, he would have instructed us to choose leadership over politics. He would have told us that leadership is about vision, politics is about positions, and that nations are founded on visions. President Mwai Kibaki epitomized the quote that life is no brief candle. It is a sort of splendid torch which holds bold for a moment and a desire to make it burn as brightly as possible before handing it on 
to future generations. The light President Kibaki lit will never flicker out because his torch continues in the lives of millions. Therefore, as we mourn his passing, we are reminded that it would be a tragedy if we let die what he left alive in our hearts and memories. On this day, President Mwai Kibaki's enduring legacy illuminates our nation and our great African continent, placing him as one of the greatest African statesmen of his generation. To his family, to you, Judy, Jimmy, David, and Tony, and to your families and the entire extended Kibaki family, I deeply share in the pain of your loss and pray that you will find comfort in the words of the psalmist when he said, and I quote, hold on my child for weeping may endure only for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Remember, my dear brothers and sisters, that no night can last forever. The sun will always rise, and with dawn comes hope and light. May God bless you all. May God bless Kenya. May God bless this great continent of Africa. Namungu amlaze babayetu, pahalipema ampatie amani, natutaendelea kuwaombea, natukae na huo umoja ambaye ametuachia. Mungu awabariki na Mungu awalinde. Asanteni sana.